Hey all, I'm Chris and this is your 2022 Airstream Interstate Lounge. We're going to start right here under the hood. Remember the initial hood release is in the typical spot, it's on the driver kick panel. Secondary release is just to the left of the Mercedes sign, simply push up. Reach over here and make sure you secure it with the stock. This vehicle will have a diesel emission fluid requirement. <clears throat> it's compatible with every version of that fluid. The tank is 4.7 gallons. Should give you somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 miles worth of range. There are gauges on the dash that allow you to check it on the fly and then there's the way for you can set it up so that the gauge is on there permanently. Intake for the air conditioning is here. They've done away with the air conditioning filter on the new model. Engine coolant here. Fill the engine oil here. The engine oil filter is over here under this cap, but being a Mercedes, there's no dipstick under the hood. You're gonna check the oil level on the dash as well. The engine air filter here, and then this is where you'll fill the washer fluid under this little blue cap right here. We've got the positive start point for the engine battery. The negative point is this little brass fitting sticking out of the fender here. The engine battery is in the driver foot well. In order to prevent you from having to remove a bunch of bolts to access the battery that you can't really get a good clamp on anyways, they provided you a place under the hood. So this is where you would jumpstart the engine and also add a trickle charger if you wanted to. On the 2022 models, <clears throat> they have added an engine, um, an engine trickle charger for the house plug. So the short cord is also gonna charge the engine battery. And they've added an additional solar panel on the roof. So there's 100 watts of solar dedicated to charging the engine battery as well. The last two things we'll find in here are the manual air ports for the rear air suspension. The air suspension in this unit is automatic, but if the compressor fails and you need to add air to get it on a flatbed, you can do so from these ports. Coming back over here, when you go to close the hood, don't just grab it and pull down. You'll end up bending the rod, lift up, return the rod to its holder, and then allow the hood to close. Finally, under here, we do have a step right here on the front bumper. So if you need to wash the window, maybe change the, wind the windshield wipers, it is designed for you to stand on it right here. We'll come around the corner. All right, so we'll open the driver door here. Just a couple of things to go over here initially. One is gonna be where you fill your diesel. 24 and a half gallons on this unit. It is designed so that you can open this port, close the main entry door to keep the fumes out of the cab. On the door, they've moved the door unlock and the heated seat to the door panel instead of on the center console. Head in this direction. City water connection here next to the fresh water fill. Remember the Airstream city water connections have built-in pressure regulators, so there's no need to add external pressure regulators. They're 50 PSI. They're also plumbed through the onboard water pump. So if you're staying at a campus site and the water pressure is weak, you can turn on the onboard pump and it's gonna boost the pressure at the faucets. The city water will not fill the onboard fresh tank. It does feed those faucets directly. Fresh tank is filled through this port here. Remember, you want to stick your water hose in there and just fill it up. Cycle through the water every two weeks to 30 days. Now, on these vans, the fresh tank is actually right here. So we'll find the drain below. You can give yourself about a foot from the step to where the plug is, right there. Next, we'll have the exhaust for the furnace. Now, these furnace exhausts are susceptible to mud dauber wasps. There are screens available that you can cover those with that'll keep those bugs out. Here's gonna be the outside shower. Comes with a little rubber hose that you can connect to the quick connect fitting here. Remember, to get pressure here, when you're boondocking, you have to turn on the water pump inside. The city water is gonna provide pressure here. These next two compartments are gonna to work together for your waste clean out. You've got the control panel up top. And down below is where you'll find the sewer hose. Now the sewer hose on this unit is just going to get pulled out. Placed in the appropriate receptacle and you want to parallel this valve to open it here. Turn on the service lights. You've got a water port inside here. When you connect your water hose here, it's going to put water into the black waste tank. It's designed to help you flush that one out. <clears throat> when you empty your waste, you do always begin with the black tank. I want you to open the valve. Connect the water hose here, turn the water on, and then turn on the waste pump. You're actually pumping that waste out. So when you got fresh water coming in the top, you're gonna to watch the hose. When you see the flow go from muddy to clear, I want you to turn the water off. 
when you hear the pitch on the pump change, turn the pump off. Close the valve. And then you can open the gray valve. When you're doing the gray water, you're just going to pump that straight out. So open the valve, turn the pump on, pump the water straight out. You'll hear the pitch change on the pump. When you see that, when you hear that, look at the hose. When you see the water start to chug through here, go ahead and turn it off. You do not want to run the water pump without water coming through it over time that will cause it to burn up. Close the gray valve. And then when you're returning the hose, wind it back and forth across the drum so it sits on there nice and flat. Heading back towards the rear, we've got the exhaust for the water heater. Camp power comes in in the middle. 30 amp service on this van, 120 volts. These smart plugs have caps, so when you pull the end out of the van here, you can cap the end off and keep dirt and debris of it out of it as you're stowing it. Finally, below that, we're going to have the exhaust for the generator. Hi, everybody. Aaron Vaught, president of Airstream of DFW and Vaught RV Centers. And I just uh, wanted to interrupt this video for a brief moment uh, to thank all of our customers for all the awesome surveys that they have done for us um, for our service work. In fact, uh, we have a higher score than the factory itself at the moment, so I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, also to announce because of that success and the success of our same day service program, uh, we've decided to expand our service center. Uh, we're going to double, maybe even triple in size. It's all going to be indoor. A lot of great things coming. But again, it's all about putting customers first in customer service. And I cannot wait to show you what all we can bring for all of our Airstream customers. So please come and see us. If you have any questions about our same day service or you'd like to make an appointment, just call the number below. We're happy to explain it to you or get you in here and take care of you. Now, back to the video. All right, coming around the back. We'll open up the doors here. These doors will open all the way around to the side of the van. Back here, we're gonna find the headrests for the lounge. There is a bracket here that you need to extend. And you'll be able to rest these just like so. That'll extend the headroom on the bed there. Anything that you've got stowed below that bracket will still allow the lounge to fold down. A couple other things I want to mention back here. There is a bug screen that's going to come all the way down to the ground. Make sure you haven't blocked it with any luggage. It will end up knocking it off the track. And in the lower cargo compartments, you'll find 12 volt USB charging. We're going to come around the corner here, Brian. We've got your external AC plug here. Remember, it's just your standard 15 amp service. Only gonna be powered when you're running the generator or when you're plugged into the shore service. The inverter is not gonna send power here. And next to that, you've got some signal for your TV coming out. So a cable and a HDMI cable. Below that, you've got your propane service. There is a light under here behind the little knob for the port. Just starting left to right, you've got the bleed and fill valve for adding propane to the unit. It's got a 40 pound tank. This is an external propane port. Feeding off of that tank allows you to run a little camping stove, maybe even run a little space heater. It is a pre-regulated low pressure service. And then to the right of that, you've got a little silver switch. We're gonna turn the propane service on with that. Back here, we've got the exhaust for the engine. And in the passenger compartment is where we're gonna find the control for the stabilizer jacks. Now, before you draw the stabilizers down, you need to have the ignition on, not the engine running, and you need to make sure that the parking brake is engaged. I'm going to step in here and do that. Pull the parking brake. And then turn the ignition on. You want to use the automatic side. And then to get them to engage, you simply press down auto.
Now, obviously you want to use these at your campus site to keep the vehicle from rocking. I do recommend that you also use them at your storage site to help keep your tires from flat spotting. Bringing them back up is very simple. We'll go back to the control panel. There's an up arrow here. Simply press that and automatically it will return to driver position. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the entry step. There is a step hold switch. You're gonna see that right inside here on this Firefly control panel, the little black switch. We're gonna turn it on and that'll allow us to close the main entry door, leaving the step out. That way, if it's early in the morning and you're groggy, you won't take a header when you're coming out. I will mention that the engine is gonna override this. So if you start the vehicle and you begin to drive away, there is a travel warning that is gonna sound, but this will go ahead and tuck in on its own. All right, and then next to that on that same control panel is gonna be the on off switch for the main house battery. So when you're turning the power on to the van, to the house portion of that, you'll do so from the switch right there. We're gonna skip that control panel. We're gonna come up in here and open this compartment right across from the entry door. And we have the main control panel here. Note at the top, it says step ex extended and ignition active here on the awning control. So when you have the ignition on, it's, not, it's gonna disable the awning and it's also gonna let you know what of four triggers are out that will prevent you from driving away? Those are gonna be the step out, the awning out, the skylight open, and the stabilizer jacks down. We're gonna turn the ignition off, and you'll note that all those warnings go away and it's now gonna allow us to use the house as it was designed. The first thing we're gonna do is extend the awning. Comes out automatically. Now this awning has a wind sensor. It's set to about 15 miles an hour, so if it gets a big gust, it's gonna fold in on its own. Do not rely on that wind sensor when you begin to drive away, and do not rely on the wind sensor when you're not around. If you're not around, make sure you've got the awning folded in. All right, back to the control panel. On the top left, we've got your light master. Turns all the interior lights on and off. You've got several dimming options, a medium dim, a lower dim, and then a cinema mode that will draw the window shades down. It's kind of setting the unit up so that you can watch a movie. Now you can use the on button on the light master to reset the light. So if you don't know what dim you're on or you don't know what was on and off, hold your finger here and it will reset everything on and at full brightness. So below the on and control, you've got a bug screen on the rear. We're gonna press down. Probably gonna be a little difficult to see it coming down there. But remember that one goes all the way to the floor. So make sure you haven't blocked it with anything in the luggage compartment. Below that, you've got the HVAC display. <clears throat> so this is your target temperature here. This is the internal temperature. And when you're using the HVAC, you'll get a little icon right here, either a snowflake or a little flame to indicate what you're using. Across the top here, you have your tank levels. Propane tank is full on this one. You've got tank heaters on the bottom of all the water tanks. So if you're staying somewhere where it's freezing, you can turn that on. It'll keep the water in the water tanks from freezing. You're gonna turn the water heater on here. Remember, it is gas powered, so you need to have the propane service turned on and the water pump here. <clears throat> Below that, we have the generator. To get the generator to start, the first thing you need to make sure you've done is turn the propane on. The generator is running on propane. And then we're gonna hold our finger on the start button here until it fires up. Customer service, line one. Customer 
Now, it may not have been readily apparent, but over here on the power control, it switched from the 30 amp short service over to the generator. The generator has the priority. So if you've been using your air conditioning plugged into the short service, when you turn the generator on, it's gonna take a few minutes for it to build the power back up to get the air conditioner going. The easiest way to tell that the power has built back up is that you'll hear the microwave beep, but you can look at this control panel as well. And if you hit the scroll button, it's gonna tell you the air conditioner is shed and the microwave is shed. And once the power has built up, those will say powered. We're actually gonna stop the generator. I do wanna mention you have an automated generator start. Below that is the chassis and house battery display. The automated generator start is this icon here. There are two parameters to get the generator start. You got a low voltage trigger, so you can set it so that it starts the generator automatically when it reaches a certain voltage, turns off when it reaches this set voltage, will run for a maximum of 240 minutes, 10 minutes of minimum run time, and it will start up to four times before it gives you a fault. There is also an HVAC load. So that way you can set it up so that it only comes on whenever the air conditioner needs that extra power from the generator. Next is gonna be the lights. When we hit the master, I want you to note that it only affects the interior lights. The outside lights will stay on and it also takes a snapshot of whatever you had turned off and it will only turn back on whatever was on. Again, you can hold your finger on the on button here to reset everything at full brightness. Skipping the automated generator start, we've got the HVAC. We're gonna turn the furnace on first. We're gonna turn the temperature up over ambient. Remember the furnace is propane fired. So you need to have your propane service turned on. You'll hear it come on down below. It will not light immediately. It takes about 10, 15 seconds before it does finally light. It's not real easy on the vans to tell that it's running until you start feeling heat come out of there. So the sound of the igniter and the furnace is running now. We're gonna turn that off and you'll note that when we do, you do still have the little icon here displayed on this page as well. And the furnace does not shut off immediately. So give it a chance to stop on its own before you depower the unit. We're gonna run this down below ambient. We're gonna turn on the air conditioner. It's gonna take just a few minutes before it fires up. And I do wanna mention, if we look over here at the power service, we do have power for that air conditioner. Just be patient with these air conditioners though. It does take a little bit of time for them to switch back and forth. All right, now you can notice that the air conditioner is powered. We see the little snowflake icon. And if you look over here, you'll notice that the manual or the vent fan is disabled when you've got the HVAC running. Down at the bottom, you have an auto that's gonna automatically switch between the furnace and the air conditioner. And the auto over, auto over here is for the fan speed. Go ahead and turn that off. We've got your shade screen here. You can do the shades individually or at the same time. We'll just go ahead and bring them all back up. And of course they were previously down from putting it into cinema mode. Finally at the bottom, you've got the settings. Fahrenheit down here in the States. Auto dimming will make the screen go dark if you haven't touched it in a while. You can set the time here and you've got the screen brightness. And then there is a cleaning mode. When you push this button, it's gonna disable the screen for about 15 seconds to allow you to wipe it down without accidentally triggering something. Here's gonna be your battery heater. These are for the house batteries. The house batteries are lithium and they are mounted outside of the van. So if it's less than 30 degrees outside, in order to get the full capacity out of your batteries, you need to make sure you turn the heater on, but this is just for usage. Above that, you've got the solar monitoring panel. The solar system in this van is automatic. You've got 300 watts dedicated to the house batteries and 100 watts dedicated to the engine battery. But you don't have to turn it on or off. As long as there's light on the panels, it's already charging. Over here on the top right, or top left rather, you've got your power control system. We're on a 30 amp service. If you ever drop it down to the 15 amp service, you need to change the service to 15 amps so you don't overload the unit. Always bump it back to 30 when you're plugged into your standard 30 house service. Below that is the inverter. There are a lot of buttons on this inverter. The only one that you'll ever interface with is this one on the bottom left, and that is just to turn the inverter on. But note that I did have to press it twice to get it to come on. So the first press of the button just turns the backlight on the display on. Remember that inverter is providing an alternating current service when you're boondocking. 
and you cannot use the generator. That alternating current service is going to power the televisions and also the plug in here if you were to add a, d a DVD player. Do not ever turn the inverter on when the generator is running. The generator is going to overload the inverter and you'll have to turn them both off, give them a few minutes to reset. Brian, if you'll trade me spots, we'll start heading back. Now, in here, you've got the bag of service manuals. All of our vans come with not only the house service van manuals, but the manuals for Mercedes as well. We've got the sink here. There's a little quirk about this sink. You've got your cold operation, your hot operation. The water heater comes on automatically as long as you have the icon selected. Now when you turn the water off and you go to close the sink, if you've left it in the hot position, as you close it, it will turn the sink on. Just remember to go ahead and rotate that down to the cold position. Below that, the microwave has a little keeper keeping the door shut will open automatically. The microwave is only going to work when you're plugged into your shore service or when the generator is running. Secured for towing, driving. The range here. Now, one thing about this range is it lights pretty quickly. So what I will suggest you do before you turn the knob is go ahead and have the igniter held down. Lights really fast. Still has that glass top. So give it a chance to cool before you close it. Below the, I'm sorry, the refrigerator is an AC-DC fridge. So if you're plugged into your shore service or if the generator's running, it's running off of alternating current. If you pull that, it's gonna switch over to the house batteries. It's got the same little travel latch that the microwave does. Inside, you'll find a knob, zero through seven. Zero is off, seven, of course, is the coldest temperature. This refrigerator is gonna take two or three hours to get completely cold. We're gonna recommend you plug it in, let it get cold overnight. As long as it's completely cold, it'll stay cold without an external power source for five or six hours. I'm going to step this way for just a moment. We're going to talk about the bathroom. Not a whole lot going on in here. Of course, the shower head can be mounted high. So you're going to hose yourself off. Up at the top, you've got a manual vent fan. This one gets pushed open. Little red button on the side is going to turn it on and off. Pull it shut. And then to flush the toilet, there's a lever on the right hand side. You're going to give that a partial step to fill that bowl. Full step to flush. Remember your chemical is going to go straight down into the toilet. We'll get out of here. Back here. We've got another panel for the Firefly. Right there around the corner. Up top you've got a carbon monoxide and propane to, oh, I'm sorry, this one's carbon monoxide and smoke. It's got two AA batteries. Down below is a carbon monoxide and propane that one's hardwired into the house batteries. On the curb side or the passenger side, underneath the armrest, I'm sorry, not the armrest, the cup holders is where you're gonna find the low point drains for winterizing. You're gonna see two white valves in there. And that'll help you winterize the trailer. All right, we're actually, let's see, down here on what they call the roadside, but y'all would call the driver's side is where you're gonna find the fuse panel and the breaker box. So, AC on the left, GFI reset here, DC on the right, all different kinds of fuses listed on the stickers to the right. There is a red LED light in between the fuse and those stickers that will shine through this little window here. Master battery disconnect, and there's a keyed slot here that will allow you to turn on and off the Airstream Connect if you make that upgrade. The other side doesn't really have any storage. That's where you'll find the brain for the Firefly system. So you can fit a couple of little small items in there. Back here in the center, you've got a bag that's got your front window shades and then the table legs. All right, we're gonna head back this way and I'm gonna show you how to fold out the lounge. You've got three controls right here by the entry. You cannot run them at the same time. If you run all three at the same time, you're gonna blow the fuse. What I would suggest is to draw the lounge down first. And then we'll draw the side pieces. Just like so.
All right, we're gonna pivot around here and we're gonna go over the dash. First thing I wanna show you how to do is disengage your European parking style, European style parking brake. So what makes this European is that with it engaged, you can actually push it down and that is gonna allow the seat to swivel. Make sure you run the seat forward to clear the B pillar and when you go to swivel the seat, I only want you to go 180 degrees. Lever is here in the front of the seat. There is a wire that feeds up to the airbag on the side of the seat. And if you were to go 360 degrees, eventually you're gonna pull that wire too tight and it's gonna break free. It is as simple as just reconnecting it, but it's gonna trigger a light on the dash that will require you to go to the Mercedes dealer to have turned off. All right. <clears throat> so to disengage the parking brake, you're simply gonna lift it back up into position, push the button and ride back down. So we'll turn the ignition on here. We're gonna back out of this screen. Service on the left, and I'm using these two buttons right here to control this. So no messages. We've got your diesel emissions fluid, it's full. Driver Assist Plus, Service A is doing 378 days and that's a Mercedes service. Engine oil level, right where it's supposed to be. And the diesel particulate filter is 10% full. Now it will do an automated regen. I do recommend that you continue to drive during that regen. Back out of here. Driver assist gives you some road assistance. Trip odometer starts off with the actual miles of the unit. This is your current fuel consumption and your constant fuel consumption. You've got two trip odometers and then a digital speedometer. Navigation, radio, media, and phone all set up over here, displayed on this screen. Finally, we have the settings. Two options in the setting. The vehicle option is gonna give you the sensitivity for the windshield wiper, and the display is gonna allow you to put the diesel emissions fluid gauge down here at the bottom all the time. I've currently got it set on the reserve, so when it hits the reserve, that gauge will pop up and allow you to know that you need to replace your diesel emissions fluid. Moving over here, we're gonna hit the home screen. To pair the phone with your phone, I'm sorry, to pair the radio with your phone, you're gonna press this button here. Connect new device, and then this is the code that'll appear on your phone. Navigation, enter the address entirely on one line. The radio is previously set up for Sirius. So there's a way to control your Bluetooth device from this screen as well. Info is going to give you your transmission temperature, your engine oil temperature, got your engine battery, and then there is a horsepower and torque rating when you're driving. Fuel consumption is displayed in the middle, and there is an operator's manual that you can download to this screen as well. Apps, you've got a browser on board, it will also allow you to control your smartphone and settings. In the settings, you've got the traction control, park distance and lane departure. The default for those is on. Driver assistance here. So that'll help you set up the screen on the dash. Vehicle options are gonna basically, does it honk when you unlock or lock the doors? Do the lights flash? How long the lights stay on and go off after you've entered or exited the vehicle? And in the system is how you're gonna set up this control panel. Air conditioning below to turn the AC off. Take the fan speed, run it all the way down to zero and that turns the whole unit off. The button below that will operate the side sliding door. There are four key fobs that come with the units and every once in a while if you haven't used it, it's gonna ask you to place it in the home slot. The home slot is at the bottom of the stack. So slip it right in there and then above that you've got a DC charge port and a mini USB slot over here. Last thing I want to talk about is the entertainment for the house. So here we have the house radio. We're going to turn it on here. This is powered by the house batteries and it's only going to play through the rear speakers on the van. Pairing it with your phone is very simple. Go here, down to Bluetooth, wait for it to finish loading.
No, I have pasted it all. Select device. And then we got to go to discoverable. And this is the little code that's going to appear on your phone. Now, Brian, if you'll back up a little bit, we're going to draw this front TV down. You're going to use this little knob here. Just pull it to the left. A little further back, I've got one of the remotes. Now, this forward TV can be paired with headphones that come with the unit. The first thing we want to do is turn the unit on. All right, now, this forward TV can be paired with a couple of headphones. On the back side of the TV, right about here is the square box, and at the very top is the power button. We're going to turn that on. Once you've got the Bluetooth transmitter turned on, all you have to do to pair the headphones is turn the headphones on. So we'll hold the power button here. And they will pair automatically. Just like so. Go ahead and turn that off. And we're going to turn the Bluetooth transmitter off, turn the television off, and then to return it to travel mode, pull that and resecure it. Well, thank you very much for your time, folks. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or have any recommendations on content you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy our content, give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream DFW.